Hello, Trampoline friends, and welcome back to episode eight of Trampoline Insights. I'm Nuno Marino, alongside Stephen Gluckstein, and today we'll be talking about world championships and world age group competition analytics. We're going to dive into questions like how many world championship finalists have attended the world age group competition, and of those athletes, how many finaled at the world age group competition. Before we answer these questions for you, we challenge you to take a guess. Do you think 10% of the world championship finalists over the past 10 years have attended world age groups? Do you think more, 50%? What's your guess? Let's find out. And before we start, I would kindly ask you if you would subscribe, click the bell icon, and like or dislike the video. It helps the channel anyway. So And it's free. So, and it's free. It doesn't hurt anyone. Steven, so why don't you guide us through the files that you did because Stephen realized all these or collected all this data why don't you guide us through the files that we have to analyze today absolutely so I made one of these documents uh, a long time ago when I became the um, the national team head coach for our junior national team and one of our the main competitions that I was um, heading or coaching was the World Age Group competition. So I started to do a little bit of um, data analysis and data collection. And the one document that I have, uh, which I'll share right here, this first document is uh, the analytics for each age group. So here we have the difficulty listed on the left-hand column and graphed right here on the right. So this is the difficulty in 2005, 2007, and all of the world age groups all the way up until 2019. And, and right now we're talking, right now we're talking about uh, 11 and 12 May. Right. Correct? So up here, up here on the left-hand corner, it says 11 to 12 M, standing for 11 to 12 male. So this first uh, grouping here is difficulty. Difficulty is here in the orange and time of flights on the right here in the yellow. And so, so again, this difficulty, yep. this difficulty that you collected of all the finalists, did you average it? Yes, exactly. So there's multiple tabs here down at the bottom. You can see for each um, competition. So let's jump here just arbitrarily to 2013 World Age Groups, and you can see, World Age Group. yep, yep. Two th 2013 World Age Groups here, and you can see if I have first through eighth listed with their difficulty and time of flight and, and at the flight. bottom it's averaged yep so the Got difficulty it. average of all the finalists and the time of flight averaged of all the finalists and i if they fell if it was an incomplete routine i did not include that so these are only completed routines because obviously if someone did only three skills that would skew the whole difficulty average that so, would change the average of the and difficulty, I, obviously I, yep and I understand it's not it's not perfect, right? Especially if there's a lot of people that fell. Some sometimes there was four people, almost fifty percent of the final that fell. So I know that that messes up the the average. But you know we're we're doing. I did the best I could with with uh, the numbers that with I had. With the data, with the data that you had, of course, of course. Exactly. I think exactly. I think this is already great that you had time to and and the, the the motivation to collect all these data. I think this is really really important for the coaches and the athletes to try and and the and the plan ahead see what what this trend will take us hopefully if we see a pattern on it we'll, we'll analyze it today and see if we can find a pattern exactly and that was that was one of the the goals was to anticipate the the difficulty and time of flight uh coming up and i thought about doing it for total score as well but it's so difficult when the rules are constantly changing and what when we when we analyze these and just here a second we're going to see how many rules changed and how it affected uh, difficulty and time of flight and how so, they and, affected and, each and other. As you, and the, as you can see, and for those that are not seeing on the video, uh, Stephen has on 2011 an asterisk that says time of flight was added and on 2017 uh, an asterisk that said HD was added. So you can see that there was some change on those components there on those years. Right. And you can also see, um, on the 2005 and 2007, there's also another asterisk that um, only six went to finals. So um, oh, that okay. also affects the difficulty, right? You're averaging six routines instead of eight. Instead of eight, um, correct. Yep. And then also here in 2019, under the time of flight uh, 
there's another asterisk that the force plates were um, incorporated and it wasn't the, the lasers, right? So which uh, we know plays a role into the total, total time. And, and, and for, those, for those that are, are not in, in, in this, um, how do you say, technical knowledge of, of the force plates plus the, the, versus the lasers. So the lasers are placed a little bit below the trampoline. So whenever the bed cuts the frame, it takes a little bit, it takes all this time for the bed to cut the frame, to cut the laser, right? And the force plates, the moment you touch the bed, it's already feeling the, 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 your force on the plate. So that time was actually going to be lower than what the lasers have. A little bit on each skill, which multiplied by 10 will make sometimes up to half a point. Right. Um, right, so, so let, even, yeah, let's let's that, continue that, down here. So we have all these all these different age groups um, showing difficulty in time of flight for 13, 14 men, 13, 14 women and so on and so forth. However, I, I found it kind of difficult to to look and compare. Um, you know, if I scroll to the top of the document, we can see 11, 12 uh, difficulty. And we see mm -hmm. there was, you know, the biggest drop was from 2007 to 2009. And if I, if I have to remember 2007 to 2009, 2007, to, oh, but the girls what was 2011 to 13. So 2007, 2009, and then the girls was 11 to 13. And then I have to keep remembering who did what, when. So this kind Correct. of got really difficult to analyze and to keep scrolling up and down in this document. So I created so a you second built, document. So you built an, another document. Yeah, okay. Correct. So I built. Guide us, it guide us through that one. So, which is kind of like a uh, derivative of that. So, basically, this first graph here on difficulty, it shows two things. It shows, did the difficulty increase? And it also tells us, where was the highest and the lowest point? So, so for, for me to understand this, the color, the green, means that the difficulty increased compared to the previous competition not the previous year previous competition well, correct previous wags competition correct and then you have the l and the highs which means the lowest point on difficulty ever and the highest point on difficulty ever for that age for group. age group and gender correct so right here if i highlight uh 11 12 men right this this lateral um row here that's all 11 12 and then over here, the next row is 11, 12 female and so on for each age group. And basically I put it this way so that we can see in what year did all age groups decrease difficulty? Got it. And what year mm -hmm. did all age groups increase, increase. right? Or yep. is there a year that, that all of these increased and decreased? So basically this right here, 2007 WAGs to 2000, I know it's called uh, World Age Group Competition, but I'm in the habit of it's calling it WAGs. Easier. It's, so it, it's for, easier to say WAGs. I know it's I know it's W A G C World Age Group Competition, but for for this podcast, just for simplicity, I'm going to be called referring to it as WAGs. Um, so 2005 WAGs until 2007, right? You'll see across all age groups there was green. Which there means was an increase in difficulty. Yep. There was an increase in difficulty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to here and to this graph here. And what that means is here in 11-12 from 2005 to 2007, there was an increase. Same thing for here. Same mm -hmm. thing for the 13-14. There was an increase, right? So yep. the high and the low, basically, for both of these graphs, the high marks where the highest point of their difficulty is and the lowest point so basically yep. just to give you kind of a visual that green and red graph over there all it is is this same graph just simplified the only thing that the only reason why i keep both is it only tells you if it increased right so from 2013 to 14 there was an increase but you see it was so small right and then 14 to 15 there was a huge increase where that other graph won't give you that information right so if you want to see more detailed on the increases and decreases, then you come back to this document. Does that make sense? Yep, it's perfect. Why don't All we? Right. Why don't we go? I know you have a, a third document. Why don't you guide us to what that third document is? Because on the on that on that second and, document that you just showed, then you do the same thing for time of flight. 
So right, same, and and I kind of indented it so that you can see that 2011 yep. all matches to 2013, 2013 it all matches yep. with the difficulty, so we can compare those two as well. Now, however, Correct. the reason why I started at 2011, Nuno, you know, tell them why why my graph doesn't go back here to 2005. Because there was no time of flight before 2011. Bingo, right? So time of flight was only incorporated in 2011. Correct. Unwag. So, yep. Um, and down here, if I scroll down just to finish up this document, down here, those H's and L's, those highs and lows, are all comprised in data over here. So for uh, this first uh, graph is difficulty. So the highest difficulty average from an 11-12 across the past 15 years is 10-1. That's the highest average. And the re the year that was done, the 2011, or was 2018. So 11, 12 mm -hmm. uh, females, 11, 12 females, they're, they're the year that the final was the most difficult was 2018. And the lowest year was 2005. And then we can do that same thing down here for a time of flight. And if we want to see who jumps the highest, right, we can just put this into um, descending order. And we can see, as you probably guessed, 17 to 18 men jump the highest, uh, 15, 16 men jump the second highest, and then 13, 14 men, and then it goes to 15, 16 women. And you produced, and you produced that in a way that it's easy to just change, change uh, to sort it however you want to sort it, right? Look yep. at that, yes. Exactly, Perfect. you just push the arrow, ascending, descending, and then if you want it back to how it was, just put it into uh, descending order for age groups. All right, so then, I started to not get bored, but I started to ponder. I wonder how all of this translates after 17, 18 world age groups, right? Into world championships. So I created a third document here. Um, Which is my favorite here. document. I must, I must tell you, I love this yeah. data, but that third document really gives us really something to think about. I really like it. It's fun, right? And it totally, yep. totally surprised me. And this is kind of the question that I asked in the opening of, of our uh, podcast here today. So let me run you through how I did it and how I did it the, the wrong way. So I had to go through every year of every WAGS twice instead of once because my, my questions and my, my thought process kind of changed along the way. So what I did first was I w went through all of the uh, world age groups that I, um, that I found results from. And I just looked at the finalists and did I recognize any names, right? And I basically just wrote down who I recognized. Um, and most of the people that I recognized are like either semifinalists at world championships or have finaled maybe in the World Cup here or there. Uh, and then I wrote down their rank and I wrote down their age group that, at that year. So if we go through this left-hand column here, I have it listed female and male. And we can see in 2017, Yana Lebedeva um, from Russia got first place in 1516. All right, for the men, uh, Jeremy Chartier, um, sorry, Jeremy, if I'm pronouncing your, your last name wrong, Chartier. from Canada, Chartier, uh, Le Le Québécois. <laughs> uh, from Canada, won for 1516, right? And so some of these names so, kind of... So wait a minute, so wait a minute, how did they both won on the same, on the same age group? Oh, uh, that's a typo. Good catch. So this might, this might be going into finals. I might have, uh, or it's at the wrong year. Thank you for that catch. So this, right, so all we these numbers correct, are, we will, yeah, yeah. we will correct that. And whenever we upload the, 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 the folder, the files, because we will upload and put up in the video description, the file, the file will mm -hmm. be with the correct update already. So I think this, this, these, this document and these documents, I would say are probably 97 to 98% accurate. Right, so these documents take hours and hours and hours and hours, and obviously there's going to be some some human error. But I've pretty thoroughly um, checked them. Um, so feel over free, and over and over. feel free yeah. to 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 look at the documents, and if you yes. see that there is some mistake, Please. to revise the documents and let us know. We will update the documents. Stephen had a lot of trouble doing this, and of course nothing is perfect. Okay, so let us know. We will recheck that information, and then we will update if that information is correct. Please, please let us know on the comments below. Yes, please, please, please. I want these documents as, as accurate as possible. So if we if we scroll down here on the left-hand column of all these results, right, at first it's kind of like 
yeah, I, I knew that that's pretty recent, right? But then it starts to get a little more fun when you get into a little bit of the older world age groups. Um, I know. So like- uh, look, look at that, Leah LaRousse won. Can you go, can you go up a yes. little bit? Yes. Leah La, where was she? I just saw her. She right LaRousse here. Leah won. 13, 14 in 2011. And now, and last year Birmingham. she was a finalist at world championships. Wow. Yeah. I think she finaled two times. We'll, we'll, we'll see. She also, check this out. Oh, she finaled in 13, 14, 13, um, 14 the year yep. prior in 2010, she was fifth place. Um, yeah. And look at the Japanese, the Japanese, uh, Mori, mm -hmm. Mori won there in 2011. Right. And then if you go yep. up, she won again. She, she won, won again. again. I saw, Oh no, second yeah, place and second, second place, place in 13, 14. Year? 13, 14, uh, ah. 2014. And then she won yeah. again in 2015. Oh. As 15, 16. 15, 16. And then, wow. And then she won yeah. world championship. All right. So Yana Palova from Russia, uh, finaled. And uh, she also finaled here. She was first place going to finals. I put a little mark there. But like, here's some, some fun ones. Hold on. So let's find. So we get into the older 2007, 2005. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. We'll, we'll go further in depth. Right. But just to mm -hmm. give you a little, a little sneak peek, right. 1992. Who's that at world age groups? No way. Dave Ross. Dave Ross from Canada, 1992 world age group games got 26th place for 18 and over. Yes, sir. All right. So, wow. All right, so basically that's how I started. And then I was like, wait a second, let's see. There's a lot of like heavy hitters over here, right? Big names. Let me see how many world championship finalists have went to world age groups. So then I made a new list of all the world championship finalists from 2019 all the way to 2009 world championships. So over the past 10 years. And after that, it, honestly, it gets really, really difficult because the, the results from mid nineties to early or even before the eighties either doesn't exist or it's like some of them were like, they only had results for like 18 plus, you know, but there was no 15, 16 results posted. So some results, 2001, I couldn't find. Um, and some other ones I couldn't really find uh, all the age groups. All right. So uh, basically over here, just to give a quick description and we'll, we'll hit this one last is um, on the left-hand column. It's the finalist. The next column asks, did they attend world age groups? Right. And I also mm -hmm. color coded it. So it's a little easier to look at if it's yes, it's green. If it's no, it's red. Then the next column after that is, did they make the world age group final? And Got basically, it. if they went to WAGs and they didn't make the final, then I put that no in red, right? Mm -hmm. But if they didn't go to WAGs, then obviously there was no opportunity for them to go to the final, right? So I put that no in white, so it's kind of neutral, right? Yeah. And so basically, at the bottom of each year, I did the percentages. How many of those finalists in 2019 went to World Age Groups? And then of that finalists, how many went to the world age group finalist? So I and guess I have we can answer here, that yeah. your ten percent, your ten percent is a little bit low on the yeah. Well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't say. <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast, they don't know yet. They don't know yeah, the exactly. numbers. Um, and so basically, at the bottom of all ten years of world age groups, I did the totals. How many? And I'm going to go here so they can't see the numbers. <laughs> the uh, the total of how many went to world age groups? How many went to the world age group final? And then I did two percentages, right? How many went to the world age group final of everyone in the world championship final? And how many went to the world age group of those that went to world age groups? If that makes, is that, am I communicating that clearly? You know, yes. I know this can get tough to, to follow, but. Um, so, so, so Steven, why don't we start on, on some more detailed and then as we go, if yes. we have any doubts, we will we'll start here. So let's start with the first chart that you presented, the difficulty. And, and did we see okay. or did you see while you were doing it, did you see any increase or decrease across, uh, of difficulty across the age groups? Was there, right. a, was there a pattern there that you thought that was visible? Kind of. And that's, so this, this, this chart is, uh, or this document is good to refer back to 
I think it's easiest if we look at the second document um, mm -hmm. here and the second to okay. to uh, to see to look for patterns because we can kind of see how many are green, how many are red, right? So for me, what stands out is between 2005 and 2007, every single age group increased their difficulty no matter what, right? So what changed there? Was there anything that changed there that uh, when did we have when did we have the introduction of four by four? That was after that, right? So that was a four by four. And when yep. did we have the when did we have the introduction of uh, of six by four? Oh, okay, I know I know what changed. So, I know what changed. So after well, the, the Olympic Games, the difficulty mm -hmm. changed. After the Olympic Games in in two thousand four, the the difficulty changed. Right. But, so but, so yeah. one routine that was fourteen zero at the time. It was now 16-2 after 2004. But this is from 2005 to 2007. This is already within the new code of points. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yes. So I think the reason why is exactly because there was no changes. People didn't have to change any strategy. They just had to increase their, their score. They didn't have to worry about hmm, should I ha raise difficulty to, or, uh, and, and so I get, uh, and go for less HD or should I do less difficulty to, to keep HD? I think literally there was no change in, this, in, the, in the rules between 2005 and 2007 and people so literally just could just saw, focus on the same thing. We just saw basic, basic evolution on our, on our sport. Correct. People follow the right. rules, evolved, and, and continue getting better. Right. So... Awesome. Another thing that we see is between 2011 to 2013, I'm going to highlight here. Can you see, can you still see the colors if I highlight them, Nuno? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So between 2011 and 2013, the strong majority of the age group difficulty decreased. However, every single time of flight increased. Well, that was because there was no time of flight before. Well, well I guess there was, well, it's between 2011 and comparing to 2011, 2013. Well, but right? I, I think that would make I think that would make that would make sense in my opinion because people were not focused on training time of flight at the time. They were more focused on jumping in the middle of the trample. And when and whenever time of flight showed up the first time, they weren't ready. But two years later, there was something that they saw was very very beneficial on their score. So they start training it more right i i agree i mean i think in 2011 people were kind of like uh 2011 they probably knew, realized knew what to expect i don't even knew what to expect from time of flight at the time exactly i think people didn't know how strong of a role it was going to play in their score they thought maybe it's like a little bonus but when they yes. realized it's almost the same value it's a huge as huge component difficulty for for those lower levels that are doing in the 10s 11s their time of flight was just as important as their difficulty. And I think they, they realized that in going into 2013. And then we saw a big swing the other way, right? In 2013, difficulty dropped and then time of flight went up. And then we saw a big swing the opposite way in, yep. uh, from 2013 to 2014. People kind of leveled out and like they uh, are not leveled out. They swung back to difficulty. They said, oh, we just focused on time of flight, but now I diff had low difficulty, right? So then they brought right. the difficulty back up and the time of flight went down. Flight comes down. So See, what, what we don't know here, and I guess the other graph can help us with that, is how much it went down. Oh, oh, oh. So the difficulty went up by how much and, and the time of flight right. went down by how much? Because I'm going to guess that from 2011 to 2013, the time of flight went a lot higher because people really start training it and uh, but then after that it might have just come down a little bit when they were doing higher difficulty routines or it might have come down by a significant amount because they were doing higher difficult routines right absolutely i think i think it's kind of like uh what we see the pattern from 2011 to 2014 is kind of like uh, a car that turns a corner way too fast and, and starts to slide out one way and they turn the wheel really hard and then it starts to slide out the other way and then it keeps drifting just a little bit until it eventually, you know, finds a center and then finds takes itself, off yeah. forwards. And that is what we see right here in 2014 to 2015. Almost everything across all age groups increased. So what we're looking at here is two charts, right? We're looking at the top chart here is difficulty 
across all age groups. And at the bottom, we're looking at time of flight across all age groups. And between 2014 to 2015, almost all age groups increased the difficulty and time of flight from 2014 yep. to 2015. I think um, at that point, like you said, they're just balancing things out. You know, they found they found the, the middle ground there uh, uh, on the components. Yeah, absolutely. I th I think that's that's it's so, pretty uh, evident, I'm, right? I'm, that right there is the sweet yeah, spot. <laughs> and and even even on the next one, you still see uh, highs. You see actually a lot of highs on time of flight and some highs on on difficulty, except fifteen, sixteen girls, but. After that, then you see a really big drop on time of flight across almost all age groups. Why, why do you think that happened there? So before, before we get there, right, I just want to hint on between 2014 to 2015, right? Or mm -hmm. 20, sorry, between 2015 to 2017. 2017, yep. Um, there was really no, not much, much changes, right? Everyone was going good. And then we saw 2017 going to 2018. We saw a time of flight go down. In 2017, horizontal displacement was included in the total score, right? So, but people, go. and this is like, it's crazy to 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 see how much red here is on time of flight, and it's it's so weird that 11, 12 female had their highest, uh, you know, during this time. But mm -hmm. every single age group said. It's almost like FIG dangles like a little um, something shiny and the whole world runs to it, you know? They said, <laughs> oh, we're going to add horizontal displacement. And the whole world is like, That's well, we can't jump that high because now we have horizontal displacement. So let's, you know, maybe jump a little lower and in the middle. That's the new thing. So we need to make it, make it amazing. Yep. You know, and, uh, and then we go to the next, to the next graph or the next um, column, sorry, 2018 to 2019. Um, I think a lot of people, again, that car kind of found its center ground and we have time of flight, we have HD already for a couple of years. Um, we've kind of found our strategy and then a lot of people started pushing their uh, difficulty. And I think because of the time of flight, the difficulty became higher. And the reason why the difficulty didn't become higher sooner it would have, but they increased, they included the time of, or the horizontal displacement, right? So like they said, everyone jump really high and then everyone started jumping high and then they're like, I can jump this high. Now I'm going to start adding new skills. But then FIG said, wait, we're going to make you jump in the middle. You know, it's going to be even more important to jump in the middle. So they're like, okay, hold on. Let's, let's, let's take a step back. I'm putting that fourth or that third triple for the WAGs men or the full branny for the WAGs, you know, uh, girls. And then once the HD, you know, became a normal thing, then we saw that increase in, in difficulty. Mm -hmm. but, but we still see a decrease on time of flight. Right. And we kind of hinted towards that at the, at the beginning. The, uh, the time of flight in 2019 switched to force plates, right? And you kind of touched up, uh, it used to be lasers that connect just under the frame and those lasers cross. And basically when your feet touch the trampoline bed, it doesn't quite cut the lasers until they sink maybe like an inch or two down. And so basically that inch or two on the way in of the bed and the way out, add it up, that's, the, that's two inches per skill, right? Times 10 skills, that's 20 inches of time of flight. That's two feet, right? That two feet of time of flight adds up for, for some seconds, right? So now That's the correct. force plates that can feel exactly when you touch, um, they don't give you that extra little inch or extra little split second. So because of that, the times have been, I would say significantly lower. How, what, what's your estimation about how much lower they are, at least at the senior level? I, I really think that it goes uh, half a point, a little bit more than half a point through a routine. Ooh. So for those, which, for, which the, makes for the senior men, there. for the senior men that are jumping eighteen five now goes to eighteen zero. Yeah. Wow. I, and uh, again, this is just my experience from from the data that I've seen throughout the, throughout the, the, these last couple of years on both machines that are certified right now, the Echo Sport and the Eurotramp one. It, it seems like so whenever the lasers were doing two point seven less than a stopwatch. 
right? The 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 the, mm -hmm. the force plates are doing between three point two and three point five sometimes in some in some cases. So that's significant, I think. Yeah. And that's I I agree with you. I think that's the reason why we see some lows on time of flight there definitely on on the on in between 2018 and 2019 that's definitely so and i think it's i think are not for people that are not seeing this steven why don't you just tell us which one was the lowest and the highest for each age group throughout the year perfect yep absolutely so we'll we'll look at the highs and the lows and then we'll look at the exact data but before we do that i just want to give a quick shout out to uh veriflight so veriflight is the new uh new system uh, that attaches to the the bed of the trampoline, the and it it measures exactly when your feet hit the bed, and you can put two for synchronized as well. And it very it's more close to the force plates than it is to the laser. So if you're looking for a system that's pretty close to the lasers, right, that's the one to go to, and it's extremely affordable compared to those other systems. Correct. The, the, I think the, the only thing we need to be careful here is it's not an FIG certified system for competitions. It's, it's created right. right now for training. If they want to pursue certification, they, they maybe, maybe can, uh, but that's up to them. And maybe they would like to sponsor the show. Later <laughs> on. Who, who knows? Send us, send us out some, some, free, uh, some free materials or maybe even some materials to give away, right? Exactly, I know there's probably right? tons can, of people listening. I know, right? That would love yeah, to do, have one of those We can do systems. some giveaways. We sure could do some <laughs> giveaways. Okay, so run us through the high and through All the right. lows. All right, so let's take a look at, um, so instead of going through every single one of them, let's just look at, in general, where we see the highs. For difficulty, I think, just like we had talked about, it's no, no uh, secret that we see the highs on the uh, 2019, right? The rules, the rules. Um, it's one, two, three, four, right? So out I have of, a question, out of eight, yeah. I have a question on 15, 16 men. I see no high. There should be an age there somewhere. I have two lows and no high. Right. So 15, 16 men for difficulty. The highest 2019. 20 so oh yeah so it should be here okay good catch so, so let's so why do we have oh, okay got it the other the other low is different keep going yeah um so yep. the high for good catch is five out of the eight in 2019 and just like wow. we had we had suspected that the rules are common now they're not trying to just do one or the other they can kind of get in the groove of finding a strategy for all three uh, horizontal displacement time of flight and difficulty and kind of um uh evolve across across all of them and i think um i lost my train of thought all right let's go to the lows so uh let's and even lows. if you remember you can you can come back yeah so the the lows are kind of um, sporadic here, but I would say the majority of them happen between uh, 2009 and 2013, right? And for difficulty, that what happened was time of flight, right? The, um, mm -hmm. the, and for a lot of them also happened in 2005, and granted, I think that's because in before we even got into this next quad from 2004 to 2008, um, if I went back even farther, then the difficulty would get lower and lower and lower because we're naturally evolving. Mm -hmm. So I think naturally before we added time of flight, before we added these new scores, right, the difficulty was lower and then it started to, to pick up higher and, and higher. So I think that's why that's a lot of the lows were there. And and one 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 argument for the highs being recent is I think I think the sport has evolved a, a lot. I think coaches have evolved a lot. The way they teach skills, the way the way the kids evolved is is a totally different beast than what it was ten years ago. So I, I really think that now kids do skills way faster, way earlier, and they, and it, it's just different. It's just a, a different system that it's safer. 
and these kids evolve faster. That's why I think at those highs on 2018, 2019 does not surprise me. Right. So let's look, let's look at um, exactly the difference, right? So the difference, the uh, 11, 12 female have evolved from 8, 7 to 10, 1, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 11, 12 males right here. In 2005, their lowest difficulty year was 9-7, right? Now, to a 19, they're doing 11-9 at 11 and 12, right? So they were doing four, uh, five, four, five triples, and now they're doing – or I'm sorry, doubles. Now they're doing no, not doubles. 10. Yes. That, doubles, sorry. If they're doing four or yep. five doubles, now 11-12, they're doing 10. Yep. They've doubled wow. the, the amount of doubles in, in their routine, right? Uh, let's look yeah, at 15, I think 16. The knowledge, the knowledge in our sport changed dramatically. There's no doubt about that. The in, in, For the 15, 16 men, the difficulty went from 13, 1 to 14, 8 at a 15, okay. 16. You also have something wrong there. So yeah, on, on the next line, on the next line, 17, yeah. 18 female, on the lowest DD, you have the year, and then on the year, you have the DD. Ooh, so good we'll, we'll, correct, we'll correct that later. That's 10, 5. And that was in 2011. 2011. Boom. Okay, correct it then. So, um, yeah, so we can see, and I think the 17, 18, and 17 to 21 age group has always kind of been tough because in, um, let me see, what, let's see, what year was it? Let me just look back here. In 2017, um, in 2017, the age group went from 17 to 18 to 17 to 21, right? So Correct. I think in uh, – so let's take a look up here. 2017 on, right, the men have increased difficulty. Obviously, mm -hmm. right, there's, there's men that are now 20, 21 years old 21 in there. 21 years old, yep. Right, and now – and they, at first, the women dropped, and then they picked, picked back up. Um, their difficulty from 2017 to 2019, 2018, then to 2019. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's let's, let, look, let's yeah. move on. Let's let's move okay. on. That was that was a really good really good conversation on on uh, on on difficulty uh, and and time of flight. I don't know. Is there anything else on difficulty and time of flight that you, that you would like to show us or or? Mm, no, I'm just curious to see. I just want to see the difference here between. Uh, the lows and the highs of time of flight, right? So for 17 to 18 men or 17 to 21, right? In 2011, in just six years, they went from a 15.8 to a 17.6. Wow. Right? Almost two mm -hmm. points, almost two full seconds. And that's before the force, force plates as well. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So So you can see how quickly this sport is evolving. It's like technology, you know? It just... Boom! It just took off. I well, think, we, we need to ch yeah. we need we need to understand that in 2011, 11, it was the first year. Well, 2010 was when it was introduced, and 2011 was the first year of four by fours. That as well, but in 2011 in Birmingham they had or, four by fives, I believe. No, actually, actually, yeah. 2009, and 2009 it, might have been the first year of four by four. No, 2009. No, no, no. 2009 in Mets, we had four by fives. Remember, they got in okay. trouble because they were got awful. In 2010, in uh, oh no, I'm sorry, 2009 was St. Petersburg. 2010, four was four by five in in um, uh, it wasn't Galfe, it was in Mets. It was, no, it was, was it Galfe it, it or Gymnova? Gymnova. It was Gymnova. It was Gymnova. Gymnova. It was Gymnova. It was Gymnova. Gymnova. Yes. Do you remember jumping yes, on them? I remember. It was I like remember. a trapeze net. It felt I like the super was, tramp. I think it was uh, the first time, and and I'm not sure about this but it was from, from what we hear that was the first time that the fig actually removed the trampoline from yep. the competition hall to replace it by another one because of how bad that was absolutely i guess I we'll have that. to have fig confirm, confirm that one <laughs> yeah and from what i heard they got a, a pretty little fine as well for for you know producing some some i guess you can say faulty material i don't know if that's the right yes. word yes um, I heard and then stories, but that's <laughs> so 2000, 2011 in, in, in Birmingham, it was still four by fives, 2012 Olympic games, four by five. And then it wasn't until 
uh, and the World Cups at that time were doing four by fours, but the World Championships and Olympic Games were on four by five. Yes, because because I remember there was World Cups in Eurotramp, World World Championships in Gaufe or Genova, right. and then another. It was, mm-hmm. it was we never knew what we were, <laughs> what we were gonna have at that time. It was it, it was, was a, actually a, a really interesting really interesting uh, moment. Funny time, right? It was a funny, funny time. time. And then in 2013, like, I think it, it was like, uh, okay, we're going to have rebound here. Okay, let's go train right. on that tramp. Like, we're going to have yep. a, a Gymnova 4x5. Okay, let's go to that bed there. Oh, we're going to have Euro tramp 4x4. Okay, then we'll train on this one here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it was. It was, it was tough. We, um, and then in 2013, I think for the most part, the World Championships went to 4x4s. Yes, um, I think so. Yeah. All right, I so think, let's. I, th- get, I think after yeah. Olympic Games in London, I think. Uh, if I remember, everything went to 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 Eurotramp after that. I don't know what happened, to be honest. Yeah. Um, no, so but they still we, had okay. some World Cups. I remember competing in China in tw- yeah, yeah, 2016 still, yeah. on four by fives. Yeah, yeah, but in China, yes, the same thing. If you go, if you have a World Cup in Canada, you probably will get rebound. You're gonna jump on rebound, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as long as they're certified, they can use them. So okay, let's move on and. Uh, um, to the world let's championships. Go through, let's go through this list here because this, like I said yeah, in the beginning, okay. this this one is my favorite. I think this one is phenomenal, and this will answer a question that, um, uh, for example, I did not live. So I only made one wax. Okay, I only went to one wax in in 1996, and I jumped on double mini. I was 11th place. Not very well, not very good, but not very bad either, I guess. And then I went on trampoline, and on the warm up turn. I fell off the trampoline, and that was uh, so. That was 1996. I was 16 years old. I, I was doing five doubles <laughs> at the time. <laughs> okay, five doubles at the time, which is uh, less than what 11, 12s do right now. I was in five doubles at the time, and I fell off the trampoline on the warm-up turn and broke my arm. So oh. I went to I went to see uh, Canadians Hospital. So how, how how cool they were. So, yes. So, I'll never forget my first world championship, my first WAG, first and only WAG. And, uh, but I think the story here is different. Look at, all these, look at all these athletes that performed so good at WAGs and then went to world championships, to, to world championships and performed amazingly as well. So, right. guide us. Why don't you run us through this one? Okay. So, um, and thanks for star- sharing that story. I was, I was curious as to, to what happened. Um, um, my awesome but I think, was. Yeah. So I before we even before we start, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and thoughts of others. How important is it to go to WAGs? Can you develop yeah. an athlete? Right. So that so, was gonna be my question. That was gonna be my question after you after yeah, yeah. You, you 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 present this data. But why don't we put that question before? Yeah. Let us know your thoughts. Comment on the on the video below and tell us how important right. do you think that, that WAGs are? To produce champions, right? I'll be honest. I'll be totally honest with you. My idea was not what we, what the numbers show. I'll be honest with you. I because I we we connect we connect uh, uh, our 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 mindset to what our experience was. Simple as that. And I never thought that WAGS was a limiting factor for me to be really good at World Championships and Olympic Games. Okay, but. I'm not saying, or I never thought that WAX could not be productive, but it was not, it's not a limiting factor. Now, we can see these results. I think when you guide us through this, we'll see very big connections between WAX and world championships. And so it's a, it's a great question. Do you think that WAX is, is very important or, or mandatory to, to become a champion in the future? Right. I think, I think um, my opinion um, is that it's definitely important. It builds experience international because you can go to these international competitions and yeah, you're competing against other people, but it's not the same stage. When you're in that big arena and the same exact trampolines and stage as the world championships, it feels huge, right? It feels massive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that experience alone is, is you can't get that anywhere else, no matter what other international competition you go to or camp. And I think also um, success breeds success. So I think if you have some success early on, you start believing, wow, 
I'm a good trampolinist, right? I'm one of the best in the world. And then you start kind of believing in yourself that way. You know, whereas I think if you go to WAGs and you do poorly, you're like, well, I guess this is who I am. I'm an average trampolinist. And then you train like an average trampolinist. And that's how much effort you put in. Not saying that's, you know, obviously there are outliers, but I think the, the, the general consensus, the general population might feel that way. And there's a, uh, what's his name? Gladwell that puts out the book Outliers. Just a little side note. Have you read that book, Outliers? I, I have goes, not, but we'll, we'll link it on the description below for he, other people to read it. And he, really quickly, what his book is about is he goes into why people are successful and why, um, like, like, let me ask you this question. Nuna, are you good, are you good or bad at math? I'm average. <laughs> average? So most people will tell you they're either good or bad at math, especially in school. Right, if they're in school in high school, how about how about in like elementary school? Were you good or bad at math? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember. So if you <laughs> ask, if you ask ago. a yeah, if you oh, ask okay, like a ten year old, if you had to ask me, maybe at that right. time I probably would yeah. say that I was bad at math. I don't. Okay, so if you ask like a, 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 a eight year old or nine or ten year old, right, you, you ask them, are they good or bad at math? Um, they'll usually tell you. Oh, I'm bad at math, but I'm good at science or I'm bad at reading, but I'm good at math. Right. And basically when they were in kindergarten or first grade, when they're five or six or seven years old, they're kind of like, they're having some trouble and then they believe they're bad at that thing. And because they believe they're bad at that thing, they kind of maybe put a little less effort and they put a more effort yep. into things they're good at. Right. So yep. kind of the same concept here with WAGs. If you, you know, if you have a lot of success early on at WAGs, you start believing, wow, I'm one of the best in the world. I can be one of the best in the world. I just have to keep it up, right? Keep pushing. I have an edge on my competitors. I'm already better than them. I just have to keep going. So I think, you know, I think that has a lot to do with it. Now, can you still become successful without world age groups? I think, yes, absolutely. But I think, it, I think it's a lot more difficult. And also, I think nowadays, it's a lot, a lot harder to catch up, right? You look back in the day, you look at yourself, um, even a little bit myself, I started at 10. You look at Peter Jensen, who started at like 16 or 17 years old and went to two Olympic Games. That's not happening anymore, right? Well, we you, don't know. We, we don't know. I, I, don't think, I don't think you can say that. I don't think you can, you can put a, a, a limit on, on that. I really don't, don't, don't see it that way. I really don't. Well, okay. Does it, make, does it make these athletes that go to wax more experienced? Yes, I, I agree that has a benefit to it. But I don't think that that because you are not selected or, for example, because you're like the fifth, the alternate, and that doesn't end up going like several years in a row or something, like, that doesn't make you less than the other ones. I really don't. And I, I really think you can still become better than all of them if you believe. I think if you right. have that mindset of believing, it's just like Neo at the Matrix. Once he starts <laughs> believing, he became the one. Right. So, but yes, I think, I, and I think we're, we're hitting at two different points. I think it's, I think it's possible for that to happen, but I'm saying the, the bus leaves at 11, 12 years old, right? The bus starts going and for I people, don't disagree with that. people to catch up, it's possible, but they have to be yes, really, really fast. But, but you right? can have, but you, I, I think you can have athletes that they're not very good at that age. And then they evolve really fast between 13 and 16, and they're almost right. at the level of the other ones. And they, at that time, may not have any wags because they were not very good before. I think you can have that. I, I, I think so too. But the statistics now show, you know, the well, the other way. But the, the, the statistics you know. only show, or well, they don't only yeah. show. The statistics they show, show the world championship that participate. Final. They, yeah, exactly. Right. It doesn't show uh, after the final. And, uh, and it only shows that those that were on both. So. No, so it shows if they were competed at the World Aid Troops and didn't final as well. It shows yeah, that right, as well. Right. So, so, but it basically, it's a very limited number, though, that the World Championship final. There's a lot of good athletes that are Correct. 13th in the world, 12th in the world, you know, that didn't make the World Correct. Championship final, that Correct. are fantastic, that might be in the boat that you're talking about. Correct. Right, and then they could be so, they could be participating at the Olympic Games and not be on your list. Right, exactly, and there are some here that won WAGs, went to the Olympic Games, and didn't make the World Championship final as well. Right. right. Um, exactly. If you so, had 2003 there, I would have been on that list for World Championships and nothing on WAGs. <laughs> right. The um, so let's let's, let's go. Let's, let's get go into, to and, the and, so, and mind you, and mind you, the. 
what I've personally um, had experienced with a lot of my athletes that have gone to the world age group, not so many of them that have had success have made it successful to senior elite. Some of them go to college. Some of them, I don't want, I don't know if burnout is the right word, but lo maybe lose interest or they, they got so excited with that. And then it's kind of like, well, that was, you know, good enough. And maybe went other ways or did other sports, whether it's gymnastics or diving or, you know, different sports in college. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've seen the exact opposite of, of what I think personally, you know? Um, all right. So do you want to go through this list of, of funny names yeah. or do you want to go through well, the statistics go. first? Let's go to the funny names. I'm okay. very curious all right. to see those, all right. all those right. that participated at WAGS that we had no idea. Because I, 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 I consider myself a knowledge person that really enjoys these things. But sometimes I, don't, I look at those and I'm like, I have no idea that those athletes participate at WAGS. So let's, all right, so let's go down here slowly, right? Um, 2017 and 15, we kind of talked about Sophie Ann from Canada who got the bronze mm -hmm. medal um, for Canada. Uh, she won World Age Groups the year before, right? In 2015, um, mm -hmm. she won the World Age Groups. And then the next year in 2016, she got the bronze medal, or 2017 rather, uh, got the bronze medal at the uh, World Championships. Um, going down, uh, 2013, we see Pam Clark, Susanna, right? So Susanna didn't make the World Championship final, but one of those that have finaled that World World Cups, um, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Morgan from France, Andre mm -hmm. Uden, right? Andre so, Uden, and right which there, really yeah. is surprising because he won 17-18. That's really surprising that he wasn't good enough yet to be on the Russian uh, World Championship team as a 17-year-old, well, you know? This, so that just kind of goes thing. to what you were saying. This is the thing, but may maybe you also made a mistake on the qualification trials. You know, we right. don't know how the yeah. trials at home end, end up. We don't know if that was a year that he was developing a, a lot and making a harder routine and then not being successful and completing the routine at competitions. So mm -hmm. then he went there, he, he goes to WAGs and wins. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, and then he has the career that he has. Okay, we had Dylan there, Dylan Schmidt. Dylan Vlad. Schmidt, Dylan wow. Schmidt, second place, 13-14, and Dylan Schmidt down here in 2009, he won 11-12, right? Wow. Uh, what about Vlad? Vlad, Vlad was Vladislav first, Gonchara from 16. Belarus first, right? Yeah. Second, the, the one before, and then second, the one before that for 13 to 14 years, years so, old. So, so he's always medaled pretty 15, much. And 15-16, he goes straight into the national team because he doesn't right. do 17-18 there. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, we already talked another a little bit one, about Leah. Yep. We see Pavlova, Pavlova. from Russia mm -hmm. wins fifteen sixteen in 2011. And then and fourth, fourth place, 13-14-2010. Uh -huh. And then eighth place, 13-14-2009. But she was first place going into finals. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think she, her, her gap there, and, yeah, yeah, I think she fell. But she was she had a pretty big gap in, in uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we look into 2007 in, in Canada. Right. We see uh, Savannah Vincent got second place and uh, she had finaled at the World Championships in 2011 and she finaled at the Olympic Games for USA. And she also mm -hmm. won as an 11, 12 year old. Wow. Right? So she's what had about, success. In both okay. Years. What about 2010 Wags? Galway. Galway was. Oh, how do we miss that? In, in yes. 1718. In, Look in 17, at that. And he was, and he was he first, was going, first into finals. going into finals. And then he bombed, I think. Yeah, he fell, I think. So 2010, uh, I'm trying to remember who the team was in 2010. For sure, Dong Dong and Chu Chow. And uh, I don't remember who, who were the other two. But I think this was the time that Galway was still showing. It. As it, For me, this shows that Galway with 17-18, he was probably good, but not as good to beat the other ones and be at World Championship, right? And then look who he became. After right. that, he's the only the only athlete to ever no, not the only, but the, the um, actually I is think the only male athlete to have four world titles consecutively. Right. Because even Moskalenko, right. they're not consecutive. Had it, yeah. I think. Right. Right. You're right. You're right. And and uh, Karavayeva, she has five, I think, and the, right. I'm not sure they were consecutive. I think Judy I Judy Judy Wills Klein, I think, also has five, and I don't think they were consecutive. 
I think she has yeah, like for, three or I four consecutive. Mayo, FIG just did a poll the other day with the, who mm-hmm. was the, the, the male trampolinist with four titles consecutive. It was Galilei. I knew that right. one. Yep. Yeah. So then yeah, look, look where he beca- what he became after 2010 when he was seventh place. He probably probably crashed in finals after yep. going first into finals 17, 18. <laughs> yeah. 2010 world age groups. Um, all right, let's keep let's keep going down. We see Samantha Smith, 17, also competed in 17, 18 age group. Um, and I think that's something that became a little bit more competitive as we get into like the late uh, 2000s, early 2010s, right? Is that that 17, 18 group started getting pretty competitive. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Sam, Samantha Smith, who's a heavy hitter nowadays from, from Canada, got third place as a 17, 18 year old. And we see Absolutely. Emma Smith beat her. Uh, in the seventeen eighteen that that same year, I uh, love Emma Smith. I wish she had not stopped. You know, she I was uh, the first girl that I saw do three triples. Three triples, yeah, yep, yeah. Um, I, I, I love the way she jumped, but she was was she she was was she she was on the team that the year they won. I think that was twenty thirteen, right? That the British girls uh, won in Bulgaria. I don't remember. I do not remember. I could be Maybe. I could be wrong. I thought it was 2013, but uh, British friends, give us a comment. Tell us if we're right or wrong. Was that 2013? Was that the year that you guys, the girls' trampoline team, won the world championships? And was Emma Smith on that team? All right, let's continue here. Right, we see. J- Ginga. How do you pronounce his name? Jinga. I would say Ginga. 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 Right from Japan, uh, fourth place for 15, 16. Look at Melnick. Melnick and Fedorenko yes. right there in 2007. Right here. Wow, that's a heavy hitter. Right heavy, heavy hitters wow. in 2007 World Age Groups. Right, We have Look Morgan from France, Arnold, Angel. Arnold, Mo- Morgan, uh, and well, Jeff when he was from Nikita Fedorenko, yep. Mik- uh, Mikhail Melnick, Sergei yep. Azarian, and Kirill right. from Germany. Wow. Yes. Yep. All, those, that's all a... those went to participate in World Championships. All well, of they, them. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and I'm, wow. all of them have either made final or almost made the final at the World Championship, mm-hmm. I think. Yes. All of those, all of those athletes. Um, wow. Uh, That's let's a keep heavy hit right there. Yeah. Same thing. Look at 20, 2005. 2005 for the men. Mikhail Melnik from Russia. Nikita Fedorenko from Russia. And, Masaki, and Ito. Masaki Ito. And all of these are medalists, right? Melnik, first yep. place, 13-14. Fedorenko, second place, 13-14. Ito, 17, 18. Why was he competing, Masaki Ito competing at the World Age Groups, right? Masaki Ito, now we know, is one of like the greatest of all time. You know, he yeah. definitely, definitely hit her. One of my favorite athletes uh, to watch bounce. And he was, he didn't even win. He was second place at the WAGs. That shows you how competitive, wow. right? The 17, 18 or 17 to 21 is becoming. Wow. All right, we go to 2005 yes. on the girls' side. We see Luba, Luba from uh, Georgia. From Georgia, uh, she won 15, 16 year old, and I think she's she also had some other success. I wonder if we skipped over her. I, I thought I had written her down. I could be wrong. Oh, I think what I know. I think she had she had gone to a one more, but I don't think she had finaled. Um, she she won 15, 16. You know what the crazy thing is? I think her difficulty was the same then as it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I know now she has a baby and she does she doesn't usually do the trip the trip starts, um, but I think her uh, her difficulty has stayed the same pretty much since fifteen sixteen and I'm who can who can argue against it you know she's, I know, right? she's looking you know to to possibly compete at her third Olympic games yeah you know yeah. Um, and and see for example I, I think that is interesting look at the two thousand three. We have Ana Rente that made finals in in fifteen sixteen, right? And then do below that, I'm not sure, but I, that might have been her only wags. I'm not sure. Maybe. And the uh, and the uh, and after that, she went to three Olympic games. Right, right. But I don't think any. Did she? I don't remember if she made a world championship final. I don't think she made world. She was always very close. Always very mm-hmm. close there. Yes. So this is a fun one, right? 2003. Who do you want to start with? The girls or the guys over here? Let's start with because the girls. This, the, the girls? All right. So I'm just going to list it off, especially for those that are listening to the podcast, right? In 2003, in uh, Hanover, Germany, we have Samantha Sindel from Canada got second place for 
Elena Aber from USA got first place for 1516 and then went on to final uh, the next world championships, I think fourth or fifth place. We have uh, Xingping Zong from China, second uh, 1516, which is interesting, you know, because, uh, sorry to pause, but we, nowadays, I, I don't think China comes to the World Age Group competition anymore, but, or if they do, it's very... I don't think that they participate in many. They only participate in, in some. And nowadays, I think la this last year we had some Chinese, but like four athletes total, something like that. I don't remember the number. Very right. low number. Very low and number. I, um, and looking back at this, like I was looking for like Hey Wena um, through, mm -hmm. and I think she was the same age at this time. Um, she was 15, 16, I believe, in 2013. But they only brought two uh, men and two women per age group that year, and a couple other years as well. So she probably she could have been third, fourth, fifth, sixth ranked in China, and then eventually made why her way back up. Why would you take? Why would you take more if only two go to final? <laughs> no, just kidding. Right. On wags, they don't, two don't. The go wags, to final. All go, they, they all, go more. All go it, to it, final. Yeah, it was a joke. It was a joke. Yeah. Well, like, I was thinking so, as a Chinese, why do you take more than two if only two go to final? Uh, <laughs> no need. <laughs> right. We see another, right, heavy hitter Chinese, Dan, Li Dan wow. from China. Third place, 1516. We wow. also see in the same, this, look at this 15. We have, um, I think, all one, two, three. We're missing one. We have almost so all what, the so finalists in, 2000, in 2003 for 1516 girls. Let's go back, let's go back here. Yeah, let's go back yeah. here. We, we have first, second, and third place for 1516, and the first girl is Elena Haber, and then two Chinese. Right. So what we're saying is that Elena Haber could be could have been really, 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 really good. <laughs> she was really, really good. As I said, she yes. made the final at her first but, World Championships in 2005. She made the final, I think, in fifth or fourth place. And then what happened? If she would have continued her career, she could have been even, even more, even better for the next 10 years, 15 years. I think, I think you know it. I know it. I think Dimitri Polyrush knows it probably the most out of all of us. And I think she knows it too. But, yeah, you know, to, again, to, to each their own. And um, some people are crazy about trampoline and their life revolves around it. And some people, you know, have yeah. have lives, I guess, outside of, of the sport. Not that, you know, we don't. But some people are completely dive, you know, head first. <laughs> I would okay, say you, you're head first into this sport. I think you're swimming in the deep end. I think you're all in. Shoot. All right. So, um, yeah. So we have first yeah. Elena Hebert for 15, 16 girls. Second is uh, Xingping Zhang from China. Third place is Li Dan. I uh, don't have fourth place listed. Fifth place, Rosie McLennan from Canada, right up there from the get-go. And then sixth place, Anna Rente from Portugal, who went to three Olympic Games. That was, we that also, was a great group there, too. There was that. a really, really great group. And then we go to look to the 17-plus uh, division. And at this point in time, it was literally 17-plus. So you see uh, Morinova from Russia was 23 years old competing at the World Age Group competition, and yeah. she won. All right, we see Amanda Parker. She was 17. She got second place. Kat Driscoll was 17 at this time as well. Um, again, could have competed at the World Championships. Right, yep. they competed age eligible for world championships. These heavy, heavy hitters that you know have gone to Olympic Games and, and world championship finals, you know, are still going to, to WAGs at 17 years old. So, I think a lot of people who maybe have the false allegation of or understanding that if you're 17, 18 and you're not good enough to go to the world championships yet, that you know, the, the time has already passed. And obviously, mm -hmm. this data is showing the exact opposite. Yeah. See, right, I wish, have, I wish, yeah. I wish uh, 17 to 21 would become uh, 17 and over, or even a little bit 17 to 23. I think we, I think we're missing out on on a lot of great athletes after 21 years old. That I think they're a little bit left out, and and even maybe think, oh, I'm not good enough to make national team, so I'm not that, I'm not that good. And with the longevity of our sport, I think, if I I finished my career with 32. You finished mm -hmm. with twenty eight, so yeah. the, uh, plenty of years still to still to jump after that. I think I think um, my personal opinion would be like seventeen to nineteen, and then twenty and over. Because I think to me at seventeen, yes, I understand you probably need a few more years to advance to the world championship level, maybe especially not the level now what it is, you know. But I think you should probably be able to get there. 
by by 20, three, three four oh. years. And if not, then, then maybe, I think you still can compete in a category 20 and over. Then maybe we maybe it would be easier to do 17, 18 to maintain the same uh, spread of years as the other age groups, and right. then and then, and then 19, 19 and over. over. Yeah, I, I don't know. But the problem with that that I see is that it's one more age group that had to be fit on the schedule. And if you yes. just do the same age group, <laughs> 17 and over, it's the same number of athletes. You just allow a, a broader pool to go into that number of athletes. That's all. So right. it would not need a huge change on the schedule. But mm -hmm. again, a conversation for another day. Yep. All Talk right. So let's go over. Yeah, the men. This is another great year, right? 2003 wow, uh, Hanover. Uh, Nikita Fedorenko, baby, 11, 12 years old. Got <laughs> 11, second 12 place. years old. Lu Chun Long, world champion, uh, won the 13, 14, 14. Uh, world age groups. Masaki Ito won 15, 16. Vyach uh, Vyacheslav or Slava Model from Belarus, uh, yes, got second place, went on, uh, went on to the Olympic Games, I and is famous movie. for that Mario mustache that no one else yep. in the sports can grow a mustache like that. Like that, I love that. Then we I have, uh, have Tangizi from Georgia in the fifth place, uh, made the final. Uh, Fez, wow, a 15, 16 year old. And then wow, look at this. I, These I are some names that, that you probably Alexander remember. Alexander Levin. Yes. Yes. I remember that. What I remember, I don't know. It's nice to say. I remember. Michael, Michael Kubica, he was a great athlete. Alexey yeah. Ilichev. Wow. World, world champion on double mini. And, yes. and Sebastian always, Martini. Yes. Yes. Wow. In 2003, 17 and over. Wow. Um, and then 2001, I didn't have results for, but I got some into the 90s. Check this out. 1999 South wow, Africa World Shen Age Chun. Group comp competition. Shan Shan from China, second place and 13, 14 years old. You wow. know, so I get it. Chinese are not sending much, but the ones that they're sending, most of them are going on to to you know be great in the sport. And I'm wondering, is it that that belief thing, or is it the experience that gives them a leg up on their other Chinese competitors? Yeah, no. I, I I don't know, but I think it's interesting at, at that time, at that time that they were sending these uh, athletes to WAGs, which as we can see were not a lot, but they were sending some athletes on almost eight, almost all the age groups. These athletes, like you said, went to become great in the future, and now they don't send as many, uh, or not even in all age groups, and the 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 world has catch up to them a little bit. So I wonder if they should revisit this strategy of sending athletes to WAG to gain that advantage again. The sport changed a lot. The world catch up to the Chinese. But uh, I don't know. Did the strategy of sending athletes to WAG was part of that increase on, on, on world domination? That's a good point. <laughs> <At the time. laughs> so let's take a look at 1999 World Age Group uh, competition men. All right, we see a, a lot of big names here as well. Masaki Ito competed as an 11, 12 year old. I think he competed at every single one of every single age wow. group competition that he was eligible for. We see Diego Ganchino from Portugal uh, competed that sixth place. Is, is a great group. Look at that. Yeah, and I think and on this document, I only really listed uh, finalists, right? So like. There might be people like Diogo Gancino that maybe competed at all of the world age groups for 13, 14, 15, 16, just like Masaki Ito, but maybe he didn't make, maybe he was just Which outside I think the he final. Did. Yeah. And I, I remember did, what yeah. I, I, rem I remember now what I, when I lost my train of thought, when we were talking about the highs and the lows before the, um, the, some of the numbers are not skewed, but I, I guess you could say skewed the, um, because back, I can't remember the year it changed. I have it documented somewhere they took six world age groups to finals, six finalists. Oh, instead of okay. eight. And then it changed to eight. So you only have some, uh, the numbers are less. Correct. Um, right. We see Manabu, Sebastian Martini here in 1999, Alexei Ilichov uh, from Russia, who is a world champion on double mini, fantastic Uyama. on trampoline. Uyama, right? Uyama. Uyama mm -hmm. what, 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 didn't Uyama like reign over all world cups, like in 2009 or something? He won like, I think every single world cup or, or maybe it was yes. even earlier, 20s, 2007, maybe? I, I think it was 2007. I don't remember. Yeah. I think it was 2007, but he was and, phenomenal. My goodness, that man won everything. His pike positions are, like, insane. I th mm -hmm. He has, like, his feet, like, almost touches his head. He has, like, this perfect pike position. 
right? We see Constantine here as uh, got third place in 15, 16. Do you remember him? He was pushing the envelope for triples, man. And I, he just, I was like, dude, just take out some triples and stay on your feet. Like you don't have to do eight triples. Like I think he was a phenomenal, was a phenomenal athlete. I think he was a phenomenal athlete. I think if he wanted to be more successful, he needed to change the strategy that he had for competition. That's all. At that time, not everyone was doing three triples and he was doing more than five. So if he would have done four triples and finished routines, he would have been amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, who else in 1999 here? We have Greg Penny from France uh, who went on Greg for, I think, Greg Pen. Greg Pen. Hmm? Yep. Uh and then let's keep going, man. This is fun, right? 1996. Yeah, this is Russia. Fun. Look at 96. Jamie wow. Moore. The 96 men, James Higgins from Great Britain, 1 11 12. I remember Tetsuya James Satomura. Really Tets, Tets got second place, 11 12. Baby Tets. Sebastian Martini, little baby, 11 12, got fourth place. Flavio yep. Canone was uh, fourth place as a 13 14 year old. Matt wow, Turgeon, Matt Turgeon won the 15 16 division. Who no, would have known though if he would have won if Nuno Marino didn't get hurt? Because Nuno Marino I competed know. at 1996 World Age Group uh, Championships as the, in the 15 to 17 year old division. I sure <laughs> did, and I broke my arm on the warm up turn. <laughs> Was it Phenomenal. on the competition hall? Yes, on the competition uh, hall, warm-up turn, the final touch, warm-up touch oh, no. before you compete. The day of the competition? Yep. The day of the competition, yes. You lie, you, you march in, you do your one touch. It was on, your, on my one touch, bam, off the trampoline. Oh, no. Down. Oh, no. Yep. All right, let's keep going here. That. 1994 women at the World Age Group Games. Jennifer Perilla won the 13-14. Oh, this is 13-14 was pretty – hard group right Norinova from Russia Karen Coburn sixth place 13 14 uh Claire in the 15 to seventh wow. right we have Claire Wright and Jamie Moore from Great Britain 1994 World Age Group Games men Rusakov second place 13 14 Daniel Neal Dennis Luxon Rusikov. and look at this one Manu Durand from France, first place mm -hmm. for 15 16 in the age group division, right? So, even back then, those heavy hitters were going to world age groups, right? Yep, Rodolfo yep. Rangel yep. that we spoke to, and he told us a story about I think this this second place in 1994 and yes. 15 16. I think he was telling Ali. us was his favorite, uh, he was his, his highlight uh, of his pinnacle, career. yeah, yes, yep. Um, I think Wright, maybe like like he said because it changed it changed the way the way he viewed himself on this sport. You know, before this he was not sure what what he could be on this sport, and then with this result, it only showed him how awesome he could be. Yeah, and then why don't you give us something? So why don't you? So we have Dave Ross in 1992. Why don't you tell us about some of these 1990 Wags athletes, right? Because a lot of these people you competed with. Right, and some of I them that hung around for a while. Look at that. I competed, uh, you know. So why don't you why don't you name off some of these so some of these people? Nineteen ninety two. We have definitely Dave Ross that I've never competed against. I didn't even know he competed. <laughs> but uh, again, eighteen and over. How old was Dave, Dave Ross in nineteen eighty two? It's a question for the poll. Put it on the comments down below. Uh, nineteen ninety. Look at that. Jennifer Perilla. Uh, she was thirty fifth place, and Claire yeah. Wright was second place. Wow. Look at that, huh? Um, and in the men, Sebastian Leifa, I competed against Sebastian Leifa. He was really, really good. Henrik Stelnik from Germany. He became world champion in uh, 2003, 2003, I believe. Home, in, home in, town, in Hanover. Yeah. or home, yeah, home country. Home, home country, yeah. Paul Smith. Paul Smith was so, so good. You have no idea. He had a beautiful, beautiful line. He was amazing. Martin Kubica, uh, he was um, the brother of Marcus of Kubica. Mike. Yes, I think yeah. he is, right? Yep. Mm, but no, Michael Michael is the brother of Marcus. Martin is an oh, older that's brother, right. I think. I think he's an older brother. Because Marco, uh, Marcus and Michael, they're twins. And right, then they right, have right, an right, older right. brother called Martin, which is uh, older. Uh, and Michel Green from Canada. Wow, Michel Green was very, very good too. I, I competed against these guys, all of them later on in my life. Definitely not in 1990 because I, had te I was 10 years old. And uh, I was really, really bad. That's all I can say. No jumping on elastic, 
Jumping on no elastic would, trampolines. Yes, no one, no one would say that Nuno would make uh, Olympic games at that time. I can assure you of that. Wow. So All why right. don't you just run us through yeah. really fast here, and then I really, I really want you to tell me who were your biggest surprise at Wags, men okay. and women, and then I'll tell you mine because I was definitely impressed with this list. All right. So uh, this next portion, I draw a big black line down the middle of this document, kind of because these uh, these data are, are relevant to each other, but they're different, right? So on the right here, mm -hmm. we're looking at all of the world championship finalists in rank order from 2019 to 2009. And um, the question here is, did they go to WAGS? And if uh, did they go to the if world final, the WAGS final? Yep. And then we have the percentage, right? So. In 2019, we had 88% went to WAGS. And of those people that went to WAGS, 100% went to the final. 100% of wow. those that went to WAGS had success in the final. For the men in 2019, 75% went to WAGS. And again, of, the, of those six people that in the World Championship final that went to WAGS, 100% made the final. Right? And, and we can see that the only one that did not go to WAGS was Ushakov and Dong Dong. That right. was the only two. <clears throat> Keep going. And um, in 2018, uh, seven out of the eight girls went to WAGS. And of those seven uh, girls, every single one made the final. Wow. In 2018 for the men. Yeah, Can go you ahead. Please correct the name of Gal Lay as Go instead of Gal. Oh. Right there. Uh, okay. Correction. There we go. For 2018 for the men. Seven out of eight went to WAGS, and out of seven out of eight, only five made the final, right? So, wow. Diogo Abreu from uh, Diego Abreu uh, from Portugal, mm -hmm. from Portugal. And Luke Strong from Great Britain, from they made Great the Britain final that year, not. but they never made the, the WAGS final. Although, Luke Strong told me they, he, was, he was ninth place at WAGS and one tenth away from making the final. Wow. So, I mean, it's, it's close, but in our score, close, yes, close. Isn't there, right? Yeah, keep going. 2017. Uh, 2017, six out of the eight girls went to WAGS. Ooh, and this one's a tough one. But three of those six only went to the final. So, right, wow, as we're getting older, it's the, the numbers are mm -hmm. getting a little bit lower, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then and for the men, for the men, uh, six out of the eight went to so the this WAGS. This is the year that Galway goes to WAGS. Wow. And six out of the eight went to the to WAGS. And out of or the, the six out of the eight finalists that Worlds that year for 2017 men went to WAGS. And every single one of them made the WAGS final when they were younger. Mm -hmm. All right. 2015, um, six out of the eight girls went to the WAGS uh, when they were younger. And every single one of them made the final. For the men, mm -hmm. same thing. Six out of the eight world championship finalists in 2015 went to WAGS. Every single one of them made the world champion or the WAGS final. You see the you see the uh, the pattern here, right? Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. This is this was completely surprising. 2014, um, seven out of the eight girls in the world championship wow. final went to WAGS and every single one of them went to the WAGS final, right? The only one that didn't is Tatiana Petrenia, which, but then, so you go back now into these people that were born in the late seventies, mid seventies, early eighties, you know, a lot of them didn't have the opportunity, you know, to go to WAGS like the opportunity that, is that's nowadays. That's what I was going to say, because these are, are starting to become older. And at the time that they would be age eligible for WAGS, there was no at WAGS or, or they weren't, I don't know, they weren't right. Um, something and, that was very not very known right and so here we look 2014 for the men there's only five of the men went to the final right so 63 mm -hmm. percent and we look to Xiao dong dong and dimitri ushakov and the ushakov. very big names yep. did not go to wags um 2013 we out of the women we see seven out of the eight and out of that seven every single one made the wags final 2013 men uh, six out of the eight, and only one uh, didn't go to the final. That was Logan Dooley. However, Logan that year uh, in WAGS was eighth place. So back then, they only took six to finals. If the rules yeah, were mm -hmm. how it is the rules now, today, they he would, would be a finalist. Yep. Yeah. 
absolutely right and so we go through uh, and then when we get to as we get a little bit early on like 2011 2010 20, 2009 you know it's 50 uh 50 63% 50% uh, are going to wags but still of those people going to wags look at this 100% made the final so mm -hmm. even though as we get older less and less people are going to wags those that went to wags still made the final right so if we go now down here and look at all of the total results wow. of the women over the past 10 years 75 percent of all female finalists went to wags and of those girls 92 made the final so only eight wow. percent that went to wags didn't make the final for the men a little bit less 69 percent of all world championship finalists over the past 10 years went to wags 91 percent of those that went to wags made the final and we saw logan dooley and luke strong who are pretty much in the final that number would be even more so it's so, almost so what's the what's the 69 what's the 69 and the 64 on the total you have, so yeah so 60 69 percent here is yes how many men went to world age groups yes right what's the six from the final 64 percent is of all the finalists how many made the world age group finals so okay, even yeah. though it includes those who didn't go to the world world age groups right okay and, and then the down below i said in red, it says of those that competed at WAGs, right, 91%, right? Okay. So we have two percentages. This 64% is, right, of all finalists, even if they didn't go to WAGs, right? So it okay, says, it. What, what's the chances that if you take a, uh, if you take all these names from two, for the past 10 years and put them in a hat, what are the odds that you pull out someone that went to, a world age group final it's 64 percent mm -hmm. but it. if you put all of those finalists at the world championships and you only put the ones in the hat that went to the world age groups if you pull a name there's a 91 percent chance that whoever you pulled out went to the world age group final okay so that, now that clear that up a little bit yep that was that was good for, yeah. for whoever is not watching and, and to clarify even those that are watching so now i want you to tell me who was the male <laughs> athlete and female athlete okay that you were more impressed that went to wax like that you were, had no idea that went to wags and whoa look at that wow okay all I right can start. so i think okay, yeah I, go I, ahead I go ahead, ahead. while you think so for me on the girls was mori from japan Okay, I had no idea that she went to WAGS and look at the result that she had at WAGS and then world champion in, in 2019. For me, she was the most, I, I definitely did not remember that one. And she has three, 2015, 2014, 2013, right there. Bam, bam, bam. And I had no idea. For me, she was the one. No, that she I has four. Four, sorry, four. Yep. So she was the, 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 the girl that I was most impressed about. On the men, it was Gale. I did not know that Gale had, had been at WAX and then look at his mm. success at World Championships. So for me, those are the my my male and female athlete that I was the most impressed that went to WAX. For me, for the for the women, I think it was definitely seeing Shen Shen in 1999 World Age Groups. You know, I think the Chinese are are either ahead of the curve or a little bit behind, right? They either like do everything mm -hmm. what everyone else does. A little bit you know behind like they kind of were for synchro they a little bit behind and then they started dominating and i was really surprised to see them participating and participating at a high level at world age groups in 1999 you know and i'm curious if that happened because of the olympic games the olympic games are coming we need to start developing these kids early we need to get them competing early we need to start mm -hmm. having success early yeah, so possible. that that you know that that kind of uh, started. Also, also, I think at the time, I think at the time, and I remember this very clear, like in 1998, Australia or 1999, I don't remember where it was, but a group of coaches from China went sit down on the bleachers with two sets of video cameras, right? And record all trainings and watch all trainings from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, all training days, right? So they were definitely collecting data on all 
the world on how to create the best trampolinists. And they learned a lot, obviously, right? So I think at the time, if everyone was doing WAGs, that was something that they were going to do as well because everyone right. in the world was doing it, right? right? After they produced the trampolinists that they produced and after they had the results, then they start creating their own program, creating what they think it was important for they develop their athletes. And that, that's why I think they bring some to WAGs. They don't bring others to WAGs. It, right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can, and I think can they also... We, can they, we, go, go. Yeah, go, let me, go. let me, let me, well, let me tell you, let me tell you my mail. So uh, I think I have two, right? So number one, I agree with you, Gao Lei. That was a complete surprise. And number two, Vlad Gonchadov, uh competing at the World Age Groups so uh, many times in such a high success, you know? That was so, a surprise to me. I, I see Vlad as a product of the system already. I see Vlad is, is, is for me, he, he, he's young, he was very good, but he's, he's a product of this, of this, of this, uh, uh, set of rules that we have, this set of competitions, wags, and I think so. Let me let me take let me take it back, Vlad. Masaki Ito. When I saw Masaki Ito okay. so many times, but, that was that was more surprising than Vlad. But uh, Ito, I knew, I knew because I know that him and Diogo, they were they 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 grow up together, they push each yeah. other, they evolve together. So I, I knew um, I knew about him. So I think I think How? for both of us. For both of us, we, we are, we are um, impressed with the ones that we didn't know about. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and and Lu Chun Long. Know. Another Lu right? Chun Long. Another Chinese that, you know, that, that surprised me as well. So, All right, let's, so let's move on to a different topic yeah. here. Or not topic, but let's complement this with, with, with the metal board. And we, we really thank Miguel Vicente from Spain for collecting this, uh, this information, this data. And... Uh, it's it's very interesting data. So now we, we have we have the information of WAGs since uh, I, I don't know what year we started, but I think 2009, if I'm no, not mistaken. No, 99, 1999. 99, sorry, 1999 uh, up to 2019, right? right? And we have the medal boards and we have the, the medals per discipline and, and look look at all these data. This is This is really, really amazing. So he collected all this data. We have everything. And the, if, if Stephen, if you can open the, the, the other uh, document that he has everything uh, per country already and we can analyze the, the countries. I think this is it. No? Hold on. This is no, by country the, the over other, here on the left. This is... Okay, hold on. Let me okay, this. so that, that's by country, but that's by event as well. There is one, there is is one document event. that and we this is, produced. This? This is by that country, would be, yes, all that would events. Be the country yes. all together. Yep, right. Yep. Yeah. So look so, at that. So who who is the country the most metal at wax? <laughs> Russia. Russia. <laughs> Russia. That does not surprise me because they have a really, really strong presence at WAGs every year. Russia right. is one of the teams that brings the entire team for WAGs. And and we have seen those girls and boys but especially I, I think i'm most impressed with the girls that have been 11 12 13 14 15 16 that have been oh my obliterating gosh. obliterating everyone on in their path and <laughs> the results speak for themselves <laughs> seriously unbelievable unbelievable the 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 performances by these young young girls absolutely right um so let, so basically if we analyze this right if we highlight this is russia and basically, the way to read this this chart here, over here, 99 is 1999. In 1999, let's zoom in here, the Russian got seven gold medals. In 2001, the Rus Ru uh, Russia got nine gold medals. And this is across all disciplines, all, all gender. All disciplines, yep. Right? And the, mo the year that, that they had the most success, 2005, they had 15, 15 gold medals. gold medals. Right? Wow. And how many, how many are there, right? There's... Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's four or 17, one, four age groups, right? Eight and then eight times four, 32. There's only 32 gold medals in the whole competition. They practically got half of every single gold medal that, that wow. FIG handed out. That's phenomenal. Right? And so That's phenomenal. number two, woo, this was a little Great bit surprising Britain. to me. I, I I Great agree. Brand. I agree. I, w I was not expecting Great Britain to be that high on the board. I'll be honest with you. I, I actually thought the USA would be higher than Great Britain on that board, but it's mm -hmm. not. It's not for many. And and this is only gold medals, and uh, uh, right. we're only four gold medals off. 
Right. Can, can you move a little bit to the left and look at the, at the silver medals and see what the difference is? Oh, but Great Britain still has more silver medals than we do. Huh? Look at that. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. And look at just Russia, 117. <laughs> Like <laughs> doubling, more than doubling, right? The United States and, and yes. Great Britain over here. And I think if you go over here, you can see the total gold medals. Oh, okay. But the uh, USA total has, medals. More, has more bronze medals. See, the USA has more bronze medals than Great right. Britain. Then, but yeah. Wow, look at that. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, if you look down here, it's interesting to see. So these little red squares are if the, the Federation did not participate that year. So you yeah, see here, wow. see, you can see China, China here. Look at 2007, that. 2009, uh, 2011, 2014, 15, 17, and 18 did not participate. Nothing. And then they brought one athlete for, uh, or they got one medal, right? They got one, one gold medal. medal in, they in got one silver medal. One silver. And, and no bronze. They got bronze. two medals. I really think they only brought two athletes. I'm, I, I cannot <laughs> confirm. I don't remember. I really think they only brought two athletes. I don't remember, honestly. Right. So this goes down. Right. So I'll, I'll read off for those of you that are listening. I'll read off the top 10 um, medal count countries. Right. So in first place with the most medals is Russia. In second place is Great Britain. In third place is the United States. Fourth, Japan. Fifth, Belarus. In sixth place, France. In seventh place, Canada. In eighth place, Portugal. In ninth place, China. Even with I think more than half of the year is not participating, right? Yep. And then in 10th place, Australia. Wow, look right? at that. And, so, huh? and then we can break down these medals by uh, discipline specific. So right. on the tab yep. TRA, we can click trampoline. And here we can see, um, and you can see in trampoline, USA moved from third down to sixth place. So in first place, by far, is Russia. Second place, Japan. Third place, Belarus. Fourth place, China. China moved up because, I mean, honestly, they're participating the most in trampoline. I don't think they're sending mm -hmm. many tumblers, and I don't think they yeah. sent any double mini athletes. Um, not, not to wag, but maybe, maybe we'll see it in the future. Well, maybe not yet, because now with the with the all around team final, they did participate on in double mini. So maybe we'll see it. That's true. So for trampoline, the top ten, we have Russia in first. Second place, Japan. Third place, Belarus. Fourth place, China. Fifth place, Great Britain. Sixth place, USA. Seventh place, France. Eighth place, Canada. Ninth place, Ukraine, sneaking up there. Wow. And yeah, tenth yeah, place, yeah, yeah. Germany. Right? And the list Look goes on and on and on to all the countries that listed, even if they don't, even if they participate and don't have a medal. And then we have the total medal count um, over here. The total medal counts right here. And then... Uh, Miguel split it by boys and girls and as girls. well. Yep. So yeah, really. Um, thank thank you, Miguel, for all this. Uh, and all the great data. and also the great thing here is he froze on the left here. The, he froze these panels, so even so you as you see. scroll, yep. you can still see what country. So if we look at yep. over here, USA had uh, three medals for the men's trampoline over the past twenty years, and fifteen for the girls. Right. And if we look, uh, Russia, 39 for the girls, 45 for the men. So they're producing mm -hmm. uh, more medals for the men. I mean, we can talk about these these statistics all day long and just going over and comparing and contrasting, comparing and contrasting. I, I, he does it for synchro, for double mini, for tumbling. Let's for just tumbling. take a peek here. Let's take it. Just We'll just read off the top for those listeners that are interested in other events. Uh, top 10 for synchro. First place, Japan. No surprise at all for me. Is that a surprise for you? Absolutely. Uh, I, thought, I actually thought Belarus would be in first place, to be honest, because Belarus really? has, but, but I guess Japan has a lot of medals in 99, 2001, 3, 2007, 2009, and then Belarus has no medals there, which is surprising to me. Did Belarus not participate? Well, I guess they did, but they, 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 I guess the developmental program was not as strong at that time, maybe. Yeah, because and then they started surprising. producing medals in 2013 on. Right, because, but, because Belarus was as always been extremely Let's good look here total medals. synchro has been synchro has been amazing for belarus so yeah right, let's, so continue. let's look at the total medals all right so first place japan second place belarus third place france fourth place russia fifth place great britain sixth place germany seventh place usa 
eighth place, Portugal, ninth place, Netherlands sneaking up there. Nice. And 10th place, Ukraine. I'm surprised. Nice. I thought USA would be a little bit higher on the synchronized than the individual counts. That's surprising to me. All right, double mini, top three. What's your guess before I go there, unless you already looked at it? Uh, no, I did not look at it. So double mini is going to be um, USA, USA, Portugal, and I don't know the third is. Moving on. I'm going to say so. USA, Russia, Portugal, then Great Oh, Britain. Russia. Russia, of course. How did I forget Russia? Let's, Let's see. see. <laughs> Russia Whoa, would be, was see? Almost, I was almost there. Russia, okay. Russia needed to Number, be first. Russia needed to be first. Of course. First. All right, so number one, Russia. Number two, USA. Number three, Portugal. Number four, Canada. Number five, Great Britain. Number six, Australia. Number seven, Brazil, getting up there in the top 10. Number eight, nice. Spain. Number nine, Belgium. And number 10, New Zealand for double mini. And that's across both uh, genders. Let's see how yeah. close the competition was here for total medal count. And not even close. Russia has 114 <laughs> medals. USA has 75 and then and Portugal, Portugal 23. goes down to 23. Right? So again, wow. Russia just dominating. All right, tumbling. Uh, what's your guess? You tumbling, I would have to bit. say no, no, no. I, I actually didn't oh, well, now now you kept it there. So no, this is yeah. this is double mini. Uh, this is double mini. So I would say I would say Russia again in first, yes, for tumbling, and uh, uh, Great Britain second and then USA. And I think I think Canada uh, has produced some, oh, some Canada, decent uh, probably good to tumblers yeah. as well. Okay, let's right, go. Let's, let's go. see. Bum, bum, bum. Russia, All Great right. Britain, and USA. I was, I yes. was So Russia, first place. Great Britain, second place. USA, third place. France, fourth. Australia, fifth. Sixth place, Kazakhstan. Seventh place, wow. Azerbaijan. Eighth place, Canada. Ooh, I thought Canada would be up there a little higher. I'm surprised. Uh, that's, Ninth that's, place, Denmark oh, and oh, South they have, they have, Africa sneaking in 10th nice. place in the total ranking they're, over the past 20 years. But Canada has zero golds. It must have another, it must have other, other, uh, yeah. medals there. Let's see here. Yeah. Let's see the total medal count. Oh yeah. It has five bronze. It has five bronze medals. No, th uh, no. Canada has one gold medal, three oh, silver and one bronze. Okay, that's not possible. If you, go, is, if you go to the if you go to okay. the if you go What's to the that? left, if you go to the left and you go to you go to the gold medals. Canada has oh yeah, keep going. Canada has zero, uh, yeah. one gold medal. On where? On what? On what? Three silver, and right. then they have one gold medal in okay. the tumbling. Here, yeah. Oh, so one, okay, because three, one. Okay. Got it. It's separate by gender there too. Okay, so it's only. Yeah, the and then if you go to total game. here, the total yep. count is here, and then okay. the total medal count across all genders, all uh, colors of medal, is here. Yeah. So Russia again, one hundred and twenty. Great Britain, eighty-two. USA, fifty-one. France, seventeen. And then they just go to like seven, eight, two. <laughs> wow. All the way down. Yeah. So that's. Very interesting. I feel like I could sit here all day looking at these medal counts uh, and I'd be interested to dive into like different scores and whatnot. So thank so you, I, I think, Miguel. Yes, yeah, I, I think it's really good that we, we, we were able to complement the data, you know, the data that you that you produce, the data that Miguel produced and we're complementing it all yep. together. I think we'll we'll share our files. Miguel already shared these files uh, on, on all the social media platform and whoever is interested can just analyze by themselves. And, and like we said in the beginning, if you find any mistakes, let us know so we can correct the data. We want we want the data to be as correct as possible for all the coaches to be able to use it and all the judges and all the officials to be able to use it and make the, the, be, the best choices. I, I really think this data can be very interesting for the technical committee if they look at it because with this, we can see when new things, when new changes were introduced, what was the effect that it had on WAX, right? And when and if it was exactly what they wanted, or if it was not what they wanted, then that would that will help make the next changes. I think. So absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys have any other t uh, questions on data, shoot them our way. If we have time, I would love to dive into some more questions. But absolutely. that concludes our conversation on World Age Group and World Championship uh, data analysis. Thanks for sticking it out. That was a long one. And I feel like we could still talk for ever and ever and ever on it. 
but we would love to hear your opinions and questions on this topic or any topic. So please reach out to us by commenting below or via email at trampolineinsight at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Tramp Insight or on Instagram at Trampoline Insight. You can also send us a voice message with questions or opinions by following the link in the episode description so we can play on the podcast. Thank you for listening, and we can't wait to see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye for now. Bye, guys.